Now, I'm a big fan of my next guest. Even though I would never, ever dream of getting in the ring with him, he is a former world champion at mixed martial arts. He is a fighter. And absolutely unusually, he's a Russian-American dual citizen and an activist with a very clear and loud voice on the war in Ukraine. He is Jeff Monson, and he is very welcome to the mother of all talk shows. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Sorry for the delay in connecting. Uh, first of all, tell us, roughly speaking, I wouldn't want to put you in any danger, roughly speaking, where you are right now and how the situation is. I'm in a city called Ufa, which is um, a little southeast of Moscow, about a two-hour flight. And um, things, things here are, you know, everybody's a little worried, especially since they had, you know, 300,000 people um, get called to active duty for the, for the um, conflict in Ukraine. Um, and everyone's, you know, everyone doesn't know what's going to happen. And it has, you know, despite what, uh, um, you know, some media says that, you know, the economy, you know, has hurt. You know, it is hurting a little bit. So people are, regular people are suffering. So um, everybody just wants it to, to end, you know, because a lot of people have family in Ukraine. A lot of people are, are torn because they don't want this conflict. And, you know, the Ukraine and Russia were like like brothers before this, this uh, conflict started. So everybody just wants it to end. Well, there's no uh, conflict like uh, civil conflict. There's no uh, side like fratre side. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, uh, of course, what we are seeing now. But the, the orchestrators uh, live far away from you, far away from Ukraine. And it's now clear that I've been saying, actually, for the best part of a year, uh, and even before that, that uh, if the Minsk agreement had been implemented, if Germany and France had insisted as they were entitled to, as the guarantors of the Minsk agreement. There never would have been a war, but Angela Merkel let the uh, truth out of our handbag this week, didn't she? America, um, and people might, you know, I'm obviously from America originally, and uh, my friends and colleagues and uh, family are shocked, but uh, when I tell them, but America started this war, and America, is continuing this war by um, not only supplying Ukraine with weapons, um, but they've sent diplomats um, to Zelensky um, two times, one Boris Johnson and one from um, a representative of the United States. And, and they said um, explicitly, you cannot stop this war. You, you can't negotiate. You can't come to a peace agreement. Um, the United States has been supplying Ukraine. I mean, they want to weaken Russia. Uh, and they've, you know, they, they've done this for a long time. Um, back in 2008, Mr. Putin said, um, asking Ukraine to join NATO is a red line. You cannot cross this. Even um, Amer American businessmen, American diplomats, American um, from Congress said, this is a red line. We, we can't cross. They knew it was a bad idea unless you wanted a war, unless you wanted conflict. And that's exactly what America wants. They, they want to weaken Russia. This is about American hegemony. Um, this is about weakening Russia and increasing American influence. Um, but not, not to go on so much about this subject with America, but I want people to understand what America is doing. America, first of all, they blew up the, they, been instigating this war they've uh, perpetrated this war for eight long years um they blew up the the nord 2 gas pipeline that was supplying europe and then america has come to the rescue america is now offering to supply europe which they're doing um gas but they're charging four times the market price four times so uh, america says that europe is their ally but they're they're hurting Europe. They're they're charging four times the the price of the current gas of price um, as Europe is struggling to decide whether to heat their homes or to buy food or um, or to live. So um, and then another thing that people understand is Venezuela. United States sanctions against Venezuela 
Um, you do, Venezuela is the largest, um, has the largest oil reserves in the world, more than Saudi Arabia. Um, but sanctions have turned this country into almost a failed state at this point. People literally are are struggling to to eat in Venezuela, and they have more oil than any other country in the world. And this is because the United States has blocked any country from buying um, oil from Venezuela. So America has now just opened up um, buying because of the uh, the oil crisis. Now they've allowed Venezuela to sell oil only to America. Only America is the only one that's allowed to buy. From Venezuela, they're not letting Europe, who they're struggling through a recession, struggling through winter right now, trying to heat their homes. They won't even let Europe buy oil from Venezuela. So this is just showing where um, America's priorities are. It's definitely not with anyone else other than America. Yeah, it's organized crime, and as you describe it, uh, I chuckle, although I want to cry. Uh, the the fact that a state can behave like this and still claim to be on any kind of moral high ground and be looked up to uh, by people as uh, as a moral leader, as a force for good, as the leader of the laughably described free world is uh, just ridiculous. But uh, Peter Hitchens, uh, an eminent uh, English writer in the newspapers this morning, makes this point, Jeff. If uh, Quebec broke away from Canada, as of course it could, and if an ultra-nationalist Quebecois government came to power there, began uh, first harassing, then outlawing the language of ultimately uh, driving out, ethnically cleansing, firing weapons at the English-speaking people uh, in Quebec, and then made an alliance with China, and then China began to move military assets into Quebec, 300 miles from New York City, and if those missiles included nuclear missiles, 300 miles from New York City, how would America take that news? Of course, we all know how they would take it, at least those of us who know about the Cuban Missile uh, Crisis. But when you put it like that, Jeff, it's amazing that anybody continues to support the so-called Western side of this argument, isn't it? Well, it's, you make a good point. It's American hypocrisy. But the, the fact is, is that American media, um, the American government, doesn't allow the world to know about uh, Donbass, the, the, the former republics of eastern Ukraine. And they don't allow... Um, the public to know there there are good people in America. I lived in America. There are good people in America. There are good people in Europe, but they can't make it. A, they can't make a, a a rational decision. A rational. Um, Unfortunately, we've lost Jeff Monson in mid grapple, and it was all going. So well, I hope everything's all right there, Jeff. Thanks very right. much for joining us. Okay. He's back, Jeff. You're okay. back. Okay, sorry. So, I went. I first went to um, Dunbass in 2016 from America, and I had no idea it was, the conflict had already begun on for two years, and I had no idea what was happening. Like I was like I was shocked when I saw mortars coming over from Ukraine. And people, civilians, um, the the airport, uh, the hospital, um, apartment buildings being attacked every single day. And for the last eight years, um, every single day, Ukraine has attacked these people. And how? Why are they attacking these people? Because the people of Lugansk and Donetsk decided after a coup that they decided that they didn't want to be part of a West leaning. Um, like a uh, government that that really had that wasn't even legal constitutionally um they didn't want to be part of this that they're, they're out their language was outlawed their their books were taken away um in their their textbooks from from school that had anything to do with russia so um they wanted nothing to do with this and the thing that also the western media doesn't say is their um 
referendums that chose to be democratic. They didn't fight. They didn't say, oh, we're going to launch an attack. We're going to fight the government. No, they did a democratic thing, which America supposedly loves. They had referendums. And what it also is not point out, these referendums are allowed under under the um, Constitution from Ukraine. They are allowed. They are legal to have these referendums. And this this is never reported. This is never talked about. That it's actually in the Constitution that the republics can have referendums to be um, continue to be part of Ukraine or be independent. And so they democratically elected over ninety three percent in both republics to be independent. And this is never reported. And the response from Ukraine, what what uh, what did they get for use of the democratic process? They got attacked. And and every year or every day, I'm sorry. Um, for the last eight years, they've been attacked. And my question is to to America, to people who are like, um, well, what if they shouldn't have done this? Is like, who is going to who is going to save them? Who is going to come to the rescue of these people who are being attacked? It was nothing short of genocide. And I can say this because I've seen it with my own eyes, and I've seen it a dozen times in a dozen different trips from 2016 to as as. Uh, recent as four months ago and every day and these people tell us it's not it's not my words it's not uh don courtier's words it's not the people from rt it's not russia it's the people living the situation their own mouths from their own eyes showing us their apartment building is showing us the grave sites showing us the mines that the ukraine army laid in their their schoolyards and um orphanages like and blown up their churches it's it's genocide. It's nothing short of genocide. And the world not only didn't even know about it, they when they did know about it, they ignored it and pretended like it wasn't there. So it, it's it's American hypocrisy. Keep fighting, champ. We'll win. Jeff Monson, the former world champion MMA artist.